Hey everyone, welcome back to Board Game Breakdown. I'm Chris Solomon and today we are talking about Furnace. So this is a release from 2020 by Ivan Lashin. I have never played anything by him, but I do believe he also did Smartphone Incorporated, which has gotten a lot of good reviews. Um, so in Furnace, you're going to be um, trying to bid on these cards. They're different factory cards, so they give you different actions. You'll be bidding on those with your little bidder tokens here. So everyone's got one through four, and you'll be taking turns bidding on the cards to figure out who wins it. And then hopefully what you'll do is put your cards in a certain order in order to produce uh, resources such as coal, steel, oil, turn one into another, and eventually turn them into money, which are the victory points at the end of the game. So a really fun little lightweight bidding game has a couple twists and turns in it that we'll go over later in the video but i did want to do something slightly different in this video where instead of talking about the actual multiplayer game i found a solo variant on boardgamegeek.com and it was authored by dr markwart and if you take a look in the in uh in the comments or the description of the video you'll see a link for his um, files but basically he created these little decks of cards where there's four for each type of bot um, so you have like a bot that really likes oil a bot that likes coal and a bot that likes steel you can put those bots out and play as if you're playing uh, a multiplayer game and it's been a lot of fun um, I play this game with my wife quite a bit um, but a lot of times um, I play solo and I've been using his variant and it's great and I want to give it a little more exposure so I wanted to kind of do a video really you know diving deep into that and how it plays so um, we'll do a normal setup we'll talk about the setup a little bit we'll set up for this variant I'll tell you what's a little different between it and the normal game and then we'll do a quick round playthrough I'll just do one round of the variant and kind of go over the different things that you'll see when you're playing. So before we go any further, I want to remind that you can go to our website, boardgamebreakdown.com, where we have text reviews of some different games. I have posted a written review of Furnace where it focuses more on the multiplayer um, aspect and what I like and don't like about it. So go visit that. We have plenty of other reviews up there. We have links to our YouTube channel. Uh, you can comment on the reviews. We love talking back and forth with people. You can also check us out on Instagram at board.game.breakdown. Post pictures of what we've been playing lately and kind of what is coming up review-wise um, to kind of keep you um, in the know as far as what's coming down the pipeline. And then don't forget to subscribe here on YouTube to our channel so that you can get updates on any new content we put out. So with that, let's get started with Furnace and the solo variant created by Dr. Marquardt over Red Board Game Geek. All right, so here we have the box for Furnace. Um, I would like to note that this artwork on here, someone mentioned that this looked like uh, Oscar Isaac um, from Star Wars as he was Poe, he's also been a Moon Knight, and now I can't unsee it even though it really doesn't look like him at all. Um, but yeah, uh, that's a neat little fact for you there. Um, but we are going to open this up and we're going to set it up um, for a solo variant that I found on Board Game Geek. And that variant was authored by Dr. Marquart, I believe is his uh, handle, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right uh, in the comments in the description below um, at YouTube you can see a link for his variant um, directly on BoardGameGeek also if you go check out my written review on BoardGameBreakdown.com for Furnace uh, I concentrate on the multiplayer uh, format there but I do also mention him and have a link to his variant there because <clears throat> I think it's a really cool way to play this solo and I want to make sure to kind of point it out in this video so um, right off the bat you're gonna see this little deck of cards this is what you'll download from his link and these are three different bots so you'll see that there's a helmet coal and each 
has four cards. Um, they're double sided, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, I don't have a double sided printer, so I went and stapled them together, uh, which you might have a fancier way of handling that. Uh, Oligarchy has their four cards, and Effie Carbon has their four. So um, if you don't know anything about Furnace, then you might not know why they're named that way. But if you do know anything about Furnace, then um, that might <clears throat> give you a clue as to that each of these specializes in wanting one of the one, uh, three resources that come with the game. Uh, so this bot really likes steel, this bot really likes coal, and this bot really likes the oil. Um, so it kind of gives them something to focus on. Um, whereas in the multiplayer game, if you play with two players, you have a bot that really just acts as someone to bid on cards and take cards away. They don't score any points or anything like that. Um, but in this variant, you will see the bots score points. So, um, so we're going to play with two bots um, in the playthrough. Um, so we'll do oil and we'll do helmet coal. And for right now, we'll just take the FE carbon. We'll put them over there. So I'm going to slide this out of the way. So we can set up our play area. So there's a lot of cards that come with this game. So um, the first deck that you will see are these capitalist cards. They have like special player powers. Um, honestly, I'm not really all that fond of them, so I don't play with them. Um, but if you wanted to play with them, you would deal one out to each real player. The bots don't need to have one, um, but uh, they're not my favorite. I um, also like to point out that they're really cut uneven. You see on the right side over here, it's all cut off. Um, these are the only cards like that, but eh, that's not my favorite thing. Um, so, you know what, these are just going to go in there. The next five cards have these backs to them, so you know that they're different. And these are the startup cards. So these act as your starting factory um, that you will play as. And each of these has this uh, emblem right here, which allows you to get an upgrade token. Um, so they are similar in that fashion. Um, and then they have the normal actions down here. Um, so I'm just going to shuffle these and I'll take this one. So this will be the one that I start with, put it down here on my little area, and the other ones just go back into the deck. Alright, and then the last set of cards are these company cards, I believe are what they're called. Uh, they're two-sided, so one side um, that has this top ribbon um, is the starter side, and then when you upgrade it, it has this back side, which does not have a ribbon on top, but there's typically more actions on the bottom. Uh, you'll also see that like this <laughs> has no color in it, so that kind of gives you a preview of what's on the flip side. Um, but if it's not colored in, you know you can't take that action. So I'm going to just shuffle these up. And as I've said in other videos, I do shuffle my cards, unless they're a game I'm borrowing from someone, like this. Because I bought this game to play, and I don't really care that they're not sleeved and all that. Alright, so those are going to sit here for a second. Alright, the cards are shuffled. I'm actually going to do a little switcheroo. Put these over here. These over here. Alright, so next thing to get out is the round tracker. So it looks like this. And it's going to go here. And then the cards are going to go on top of that. The round tracker does have a second piece to it um, to actually track the rounds. And it looks like this. So as the rounds go, it flips down to four. It's very factory-like. All right, so we got that. Um, so let's take our resources and put them out here just where everyone could reach. So I'll just stick them here. So these are the oils. They look like little oil drums, I guess. 
We've got steel here. This is a steel, a little steel ingot or something. Is that the right word, ingot? Maybe that's just gold comes in that? I don't know. And then we have coal, which is very plentiful in this game. And it's very creative. It is a black cube. Okay, awesome. All right, we also have a die we need for this variant. So we'll just go there. All right. Let's see, what else? We got money. Money, money, money. That's important in this game. So um, let's just pour it up here. It might be a little off screen, but it'll be okay. It's just a pile of money. So there's like fives, 25s. There's ones, twos, threes. There's all sort of different um, amounts. So I guess that could be good. Sometimes like the ones and the twos don't look very different. So if you're grabbing at things, it's kind of hard to tell. Um, and then there's also little upgrade tokens. They look like these gears. They match that emblem I mentioned earlier. So I'm just going to make a small pile there. You don't need a ton of these because you kind of use them and they go right back in the pool. And there's also some of these times five times three. So um, especially in this variant, the bots tend to get a lot of resources. Um, instead of having to grab out like 20 at a time, we can use these little things. So we'll put them right there. All right. So now we get to the fun part. Um, we have a starter token for the playthrough. I'm going to be the starter. You could roll a die. You could do a couple different things. Uh, the variant, I think actually, uh, Dr. Marquardt says uh, to place uh, everyone's one number one disc into like a bag and draw out of it. And whoever is number one uh, gets a start. Um, we could do that, but I'm just going to steal it for this one. And then you've got these other little tokens, um, which help determine the color for each player. So um, let's see. I'll... Uh, I'll be red, so I'll take the little notebook. So it doesn't really do anything other than just remind everyone what color they are. Uh, Oil Garky, I think he wants to be black. I think he seems like someone who would wear a top hat. And then the um, helmet coal is going to be this yellow. We'll, we'll stick them next to it like that. So white's not going to get used this game, so it can go back into the bucket. And then we have the different... Um, capital disc which are used to bid um, so we need to give out each person's four we'll give out each person's two let's see there, there there i will note that there is a wooden like brown two um, that is used with one of the capitalist cards um, whoever is that capitalist gets to an extra two that's used for their color. Um, but since we're not playing with the capital cards, we won't worry about that. Everyone gets a one. And then everyone gets a three. So that's that. So I'm going to put the box away. Give us a little more playroom here. Uh, we're going to shuffle up these really great cards that are really professional. Only the best here at Board Game Breakdown. I could have like probably laminated these or something, maybe. But you get to stick with copy paper and staples. <laughs> um, Alright, let's just kind of clean up here. All right, I'll clean up mine. Um, so what we're going to do is um, the last part of setup is 
the startup factory, we get whatever is up here on the top ribbon to start out. So that is a upgrade token. So I'll grab an upgrade token, stick it in my little pile, and then we're going to cut the deck. And we're going to lay out six cards. One, two, three, four. Move this over just a bit. Five and six. Sorry, I'm running out of room here. All right, and if any of those came out um, like this with the upgraded side, you would just make sure to flip it over and have the starter side there ready to go. All right, um, so I think that is the proper setup uh, for the solo variant posted on Board Game Geek. So with that, we will get started on the gameplay and I'll go over the rules as we go through the game um, and if there are some things we don't encounter naturally in the game um, we will discuss those um, kind of in between turns so come back in just a minute for the gameplay all right welcome back to this edition of board game breakdown we are looking at a solo variant posted on Board Game Geek by Dr. Marquart. Again, if you skip through the setup, I want to mention that the link to his variant is in the description of the video. I want to make sure he gets all the credit for putting this variant together. I liked it a lot and I wanted to make sure to focus on it in the video, kind of hopefully bring it to more people's attention. So we set it up. That was in the last chapter. We're going to run through the rules as we do a playthrough. So as I mentioned before, I'm going to be the starter person uh, for this round uh, as we begin. So here's the marker. I'm going to just set it back over there out of the way. And this first phase is the auction phase. So we are going to be auctioning and bidding on these six cards up here. And we are going to use our little tokens to bid here. Um, there are a few rules to go um, to remember while we're doing the auctioning. Those rules are if I have a token out there on a card, I cannot bid again on that card. So that is not allowed. Once there's a red out there, I cannot put any more reds on that specific card. The other rule is if another player has bid on a card, I cannot put that same number out. So I could put a one, I could put a three or a four, but I can't place a two. Um, I will mention I really like that these die or not dice, uh, these capital discs are different sizes. Um, sure, you can just look at the numbers, but when you look at the cards as they're getting like stacked up, uh, it's really easy to see who's winning uh, each card and so on and so forth. So big plus there. It was probably a really small decision to make, but I like that they made it. Um, a little bit about the cards. So here, let's just look at this one. So the top ribbon up here um, is going to show what each player gets that did not win the card, and that is called compensation. So when we bid for this card, say I have a one on this card and someone has a four, I don't win this card to put in my hand, but I will win two coal when we resolve those actions. The bottom ribbon shows you the actions that it's going to happen if you were to win this card and when you place it in your engine, which is the second phase, uh, which is the processing phase. So we'll kind of get to that, but that's a, a, the anatomy of a card. Um, so it is really cool how you um, are bidding on the cards that you want as part of your engine, but you might also be bidding um, lower on cards because you want their compensation action um, to be triggered. So that's pretty cool. All right, so let's go first. Um, you know, I, I can look at my starter card up down here and you'll see that um, coal, I need a coal and a steel 
I can do that one time. That's what the times one is. I can turn those two things into four monies. Uh, and monies is basically the victory points of the, the game. You're not going to score for any extra resources. You're not going to score for any cards. It all comes down to who's got the most money. So I need coal and steel to turn into money. Um, I can also use an upgrade token and a coal, which is I think on everyone's startup card, to upgrade a card. Um, so to me, I would like some coal here to start out um, to uh, get some uh, things going. Um, so if I looked out here, uh, none of these actually produce coal as part of the engine. But these two at least produce coal if I lose the card. Um, so you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my two and place it here. So if I am the only person to place a token on that or nobody places one that's a three or four, I'll win this card. If I win it, okay, I still can I'll get a steal, um, which is fine because I can use those. But if someone bits higher than me, I'm going to get two coal, and it's actually going to be two times what's on the disc. So two times two, I'll get four coal out of that, out of losing that card. Um, so again, that's, I think, a really cool design design decision um, because not everyone's just trying to win all the cards. Um, the compensation can really come into play. All right, so we're going to go clockwise. So now it's Helmet Cole's turn, and we're going to flip over this first card. And when we place these cards, we're going to place them like kind of like stack them left to right because that is important in the processing phase. But for the auction phase, we're going to look right here. And here, let me get this closer. Uh, so we're going to be focused on this. So that says that Helmet Cole is going to use his two disc. So we'll go ahead and get it out. And we're going to roll the dice. And from left to right, we're going to count. So one, two. So he would really like to bid on this card with his two. Now, that is against the rules, because like I said, you cannot place the same number on a card. So he's going to have to shift one to the left, and nothing is there, so he's going to place his two on that card. So move his cards down a little bit so the oligarchy can go. So, again, I'll show you this. So he's betting his one. I'm going to roll the dice. It is a five, so one, two, three, four, five is we'll go there and then it's back around to me so um i want coal obviously um so let's do this let's place a one here odds are they're going to place a bigger number at some point there and we can at least get two coal out of that all right, so swinging back around the helmet coal, and we're going to place this like that, and you'll understand why um, here in the next round or in the next phase. Uh, but he's betting with his one, so one, two, three, four, five, six. So he'll put it there. We'll go on to this, this three. So he wants to bet on the six. So because there's a, already a one on there, you do like this. So you can easily see that the black uh, player is winning that card and that the yellow is only gonna be compensated for it. All right, so my turn. So um, hmm. I could use this four and make sure to grab something Let's just take the four and uh, I don't really have any need for oils right now. Um, but I'm thinking here we can turn steel into oil. Um, and turn coal. Actually, let's do this. That way I can get some oil into the mix. At some point, if I ever upgrade this, it will get me an oil there. All right, so helmet coal. He's going to have four, so his big one, so one, two, three. So again, he cannot place it there because he's already placed a yellow there, so he's going to have to get it there. So that's good for me because that will generate coal, even though I won't get that card, but I was hoping for some coal to use for my startup facility. His four comes out. Oh, he wants that one. 
So it's my last one for my three. So I can't place it there, there, there because I've already got tokens on there. Uh, if I place it there, I would use that top action, but I don't have any oil. So that's really no good to me. Um, and I can't place it here because there's already three on there. So I'm really stuck with doing that. And then we'll flip this over. It should be a three because that's his last token. And disc. So five, one, two, three, four, five. That isn't, nope, that's not an eligible spot because there's already a three there. This is not an eligible spot because he already has a yellow. And so if he has to swing around to the first card there, and then his last one is a two. Ooh. So he can't go there because he already has a black. He can't go there because there's already a two. He can't go there because there's already a two. So he's going to have to go here. All right. So that was how the auction phase works. Um, you see that we've all got our discs out. We've all played them. And so... The next thing to do before we go to processing is we're going to resolve the cards left to right. Okay, and so this part, what we're going to do is we're going to take the top disc off, and this is a yellow, and he is able to turn any oil into three steel. Now, each of these, like Helmet Cole has this little key here. Uh, they're all the same on every card, so you can see them. So he cannot change oil into steel. Um, that is not part of his little flow chart here. Um, if it did, he could change oil into steel, except it's the first turn he has no oil. So instead, as compensation goes, he is going to get however much money was on his thing there. So he's going to get three bucks. Mr. Oil Guy here wins the card, which in this variant just means it goes out of the game. All right, so I'm red, so there's no other cards on here. So I just take this and it's gonna come back here to get placed in my engine here shortly. So we'll look at yellow again. He could change steel into oil. That's not part of his um, little flow chart. So he's going to just get two bucks. And I, again, am going to take the card since I have the highest number. All right, so I did not win this one. So I get to actually take the coal, and I have two coal times the one on my disc there. So I get two coal. Mr. Oil Guy gets two coal times two. So he's actually going to get four coal might be helpful to him eventually because he's he can process coal, uh, coal but he'd rather have oil and then yellow is going to just take the card and put it out of the game black player he has one times the one steel up there so he gets a steal in his spot and then I win the card so that puts it back there and then yellow gets a steal because it had one and three wins the card, so that goes out of the game. So out of that auction phase, I ended up with three cards I've got to place in my engine and two coal. Yellow ended up with one steel, but he also got five bucks. Black ended up with four coal and one steel and no dollars. So next comes the... Um, production phase um so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do mine last so i'm going to just move it over here for a second and i'm going to move these up here so um i'm going to see if i can zoom in a little bit so you can see better all right sorry I bet if I had nice laminated, non-stable cards, this would work out better. So we move this dice out of the way. All right, so from left to right, we are going to evaluate each card uh, in the order it was put out. So the very first card, you're going to give that player um, 
whatever's down here. So he gets two coal. So here, I'm going to move his stuff on screen so you can see what I'm doing. So then we move over. And what we're saying is we're going to look for the arrow pointing to the left. So it's pointing to coal. So it, this arrow up says we're going to attempt to upgrade all of his coal. And if you look over here, his coal gets upgraded to $2 per coal. So you are going to upgrade all of his coal. He has two coal, so two times two is $4. Well, oh, that was a lot of arm there. Sorry. So we'll put his $4 over there. Then you're going to bounce over to this next card. And the left arrow is pointing to the steel, and it's being upgraded. So each steel upgrades to two coal. So he has one steel, so it upgrades to two coal. Now we're going to bounce over here, and the left arrow is pointed to the oil. And he's going to upgrade the oil, but he has no oil. So instead, he gets this for compensation. So he gets two bucks, puts that right there. So that was his processing phase. So he's going to move his two coal back over there. I'm going to move these cards over. I'm going to put the oil guy's cards out. We'll go through his real quick. So those are his current resources. So start up here. Start off here and get an oil. And then here we're going to say the left arrow is pointing to the coal. And he turns coal into steel. So he has four coal, so he's going to turn those in and get four steel. One, two, three, four. All right. Next one, he's going to upgrade any coal again, but since he just upgraded them, he has none. So he's going to take his compensation down here, which is an oil. And then last, he's going to upgrade coal again. He doesn't have coal, so he's going to take $2. So he ended up with all of this. So eventually you'll see that the steel is going to upgrade to oil. So he's got to have a lot. And then every oil upgrades to $4. Mm -hmm. um, so unlike Helmet Coal down here, who his coal only turns into $2. Uh, and I think that's probably because the coal is more plentiful uh, in this game. Um, he gets less money. Um, the oil is a little harder to come by. Um, but eventually... The oil dude is going to turn all this into um, four bucks probably, and that's going to be a pretty good amount of money. All right, so I'm going to place my cards out here. I don't have to be quite as zoomed in. We'll do that. Sorry about the camera shake. Um, all right, so here's my starter card. Here are the three that I won. So I need to put them in an order um, that was best going to be uh, usable um, for future rounds. So real quick, and I'll point this out, um, I pointed out in my written review, but the standard way to play is that you could put these together however you want to for your engine, and then we're going to work left to right, and then next round uh, we would like win more cards and then we'd have to put these out again in any order so let's say we want to do like this and we'd have our two new cards blah 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 um for me that like really stressed me out it's a lot of thinking and i was constantly not that i don't like the thinking part of it but i was constantly like trying to figure out like okay if this goes before here this turn and then this and this and this and it just caused a lot of like downtime because if my wife who I was playing with is already done she's just sitting there watching me like come up with all these calculations in my head and you do that for four rounds and it just kind of gets overwhelming there's a variant official variant in the rule book that says basically once you have your cards out so say I had them out like this my two new cards and I'm just going to steal two new ones from over here I could place these like I could put it here I could put it here I could actually put it in between cards, but I can't like take this card and shift it over here. Um, once I have them set, they're kind of stuck in this order where I could put new cards in between, but these can't move around. Um, so I will say that I really love that because it's a little more strategic because when I place these the first time, I know I can't move them. So I need to kind of think like, 
down the line, what's the most efficient way to put them now so that they're flexible? Because I don't know which cards are coming out next. I don't know what I'm going to end up getting by the fourth round. Um, so that's how I suggest you play, but hey, you do whatever you want. Um, so we're going to look down here and like this top action, I'm going to get a steal. And I remember I want to turn a steal and a coal into $4. Um, I also might want to upgrade um, using a coal, which I have two. Um, and then this will let me turn steel into barrels. Um, so let's see, how do we want to do this? So let's do this. Let's place these two on this side and this over here. And let's just try that. So this one, I'm going to get this one steel. And remember, I cannot do the bottom because I haven't upgraded yet. This one, I'm going to get a steel. All right, this one, I'm going to get an additional upgrade token. Remember, I already had one. I'm going to turn in one coal and one steel, which I can do one time. and basically turn that into four bucks. Whoops, I grabbed a five. I would love to have five dollars, but I can't. I can only get four. Then I can turn an upgrade token and a coal to upgrade as many cards as I want. Or, or I should say that differently. An upgrade and a coal together upgrade one card, and then I'd have to do another upgrade and a coal together to upgrade another card. I only have the one coal, so I'm going to just use that to upgrade this. So I could go back and have upgraded one of these, but I then can't use the bottom feature. Um, so that's why I didn't do that, but I do want to do this. So if I had a coal, well, I, I do, a, I'm sorry, a steel, I can turn a steel into an oil. And I could do that two times, but I only have one steel. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then I'm going to get another oil here. Um, so I end up at the end of this processing with still an upgrade token and two oils. And I made four bucks. Um, so my bet is hopefully as I go down the line, you can see that oils, um, I'm going to be able to turn them in for $4 a piece or an oil and a coal for $6 a piece. So maybe if I can upgrade these, um, and future rounds, um, I can turn these into more dollars. So I'm going to back that back out. So this would be just down here uh, in my side of the play field. And then what we would do is we would kick this over to round two. We'd cut the card so that nobody knows what's coming. We lay out six more. Those back there. We pick up these cards. We shuffle them up. Shuffle these up. And then the first player token would move over clockwise. So Helmet Cole would bet first on the next round. So you would basically do that for four um, rounds. And then at the end, you just count up everybody's money. Uh, and whoever wins the most money uh, is the winner of the game. So hopefully I got all those rules right for Dr. Marquardt's variant. Uh, I've played it a couple times. Um, he does have a nice PDF uh, that you download when you get his cards. Um, that's like a little rule book. Um, I also say another user um, formatted them so they're a little easier to like cut out and put together. Um, I do not remember that user's name, but um, Dr. Marquardt mentions that person and has the link to their file in the Board Game Geek Files of Furnace. So, hope you like that playthrough. I hope that uh, this variant is useful for you um, if you usually play solo. Uh, you can also even throw the third bot in, so it's like you have four players. You could just play with you uh, and another bot, I guess, but um, I've enjoyed it with at least two other bots um, it's a nice way to play um, so yeah i just want to thank uh, dr marquart for thinking about this and putting it together um, i have really thoroughly enjoyed it and it looks like other people on board game geek have as well 
So go check that out if you get a chance. Um, also, if you're interested in this as more of a multiplayer game, then you can go to boardgamebreakdown.com and check out the written review where I talk a little bit more about how it plays as a two-player or three-player game. Um, also, um, make sure to hit us up on Instagram. That's board.game.breakdown um, where we post pictures of kind of upcoming reviews and we'd love to comment and talk to other board gamers out there. Um, so, you know, just feel free to comment on any YouTube video. You can comment on our website. You can find our reviews on Board Game Geek for each of the individual games. So uh, remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you get any of the upcoming videos. And I just really want to thank all of y'all for taking a minute to watch. Thank you.